Well, that some bitch is done. Hey boys, Glockster42, how the hell is everybody? That there, if you've been following along, is my Bronco People's Liberation Army ZTZ-99G. Now what differentiates it between the regular 99, the G version, has this applique armor on the nose, the side of the turret, and here on the front of the hull. That makes it a G, a little bit extra turret, a little bit extra armor. Now, as you can see, there's a few little gouge marks, scratches, battle damage. What I wanted to uh, show on this is a heavy combat veteran. It's, uh, I've got an idea for a diorama. I've still got a few other things to do, so this will get into a diorama, but not right now. So, But I did want to build it up uh, in context as in an urban environment in, uh, in a heavy combat situation. So as you can see here, there's gouges coming up and uh, bouncing off and hitting on the uh, splash guards and all that small caliber maybe as much as a as a um, as a you know a 20 mil not a 20 mil but a, a 50 cal or maybe a 338 lapu or something fairly heavy hitting this armor and striking off some uh, explosions there's actually a few little holes in the front of the fenders and yeah, lots of gouges and chips from shrapnel and uh, on the turret in the hull, as well on the uh, on the side here, lots of heavy scratches. These heavy, heavy scratches are actually an exacto blade. I wanted to show some real, real heavy damage on this puppy, so I did that with an exacto blade. Um, all the microchipping is done with an artist pencil, a black and a and a brown artist pencil. All these little holes and all that are done with a little pin vise. The weathering uh, consists of uh, a main coat of uh, Tamiya, uh, Tamiya acrylics which was sealed off with a coat of uh, gloss after the gloss we put the decals on we put another coat of gloss over top the decals at that point we shot a coat of flat over it to uh, start doing some filters we did several filters to tone down the bright camouflage and give it a little bit more wear and tear then we started doing pin washes using uh, MIG products and then we went to the ATK uh, we got streaking grime, winter grime, rust grime, all streaking as you can see all the heavy duty heavy duty weathering um, this is uh, MIG pigments on here as well as the really nice um, Tamiya weathering kit I've never used it before but uh, the Tamiya weathering pigments work like a dam I really like the way they look you can get some really nice subtle streaks and dust marks on the edges um, I went heavy. I went, um, I won't say heavy handed, but heavy handed subtle to give this a real look of uh, a vehicle that's been in service that doesn't have a lot of paint damage from from fading and environmental damage, but more of out in the bo out in the uh, out in the water, out in the mud, out on the streets, taking hits in combat situations. Uh, getting a lot of wear and tear. Not necessarily age wear and tear, but combat wear and tear. Now Storm and I and Vasily, we were discussing how damn big this gun is and how big this whole tank is and uh, we're saying like, you know, did Bronco, did um, all these guys mess up and actually do a ro the wrong scale on this? But when you compare this tank to uh, Leopard 2A6, it scales up almost identical. So I'm thinking what the Chinese, what the PLA did, they didn't use a T72 or a T90 or a T80 as their inspiration. They looked to the west and used a, a Leopard with a big heavy V8 diesel, 1500 horsepower diesel, the big long, um, I think it's a L48 main cannon and 120 millimeter smooth bore. I'm pretty sure they, they went after they went after um, the Leopard as opposed to a, T, a T90 or T72. Now keep in mind guys that in most of these uh, Soviet vehicles and a lot of uh, our own vehicles, fenders, um, fenders, tanks, and stowage boxes along here are all going to be aluminum. This top section is generally all aluminum. From the T72 that I've been able to get up close and personal with, this is all aluminum. So you're not going to want to put any rust marks on here. You can put fade marks, you can put street marks, but you really don't want to show any of the fenders or anything like that rusty because let's face it, aluminum doesn't rust. But the side skirts are steel, metal, uh, composite, 
could be I'm not exactly sure what the Chinese are using but I'm going to assume that they can be a steel and they rust so with that in mind you know we've got some uh, some pock marks from battle damage that we've added some some uh, some streaking to up here and on here um, all the panel lines I've taken out and I uh, I highlighted with an airbrush using a um, very very thin down uh, Vallejo primer black gray I think it's their um, their German black gray it really adds a lot of pop to the panel lines and it also gives it that really rough wore down um, battered veteran look and that's what I was going for on this thing uh, something that's been out and out and seen the uh, seen the wars so to speak now along here a lot of this all these little micro chipping chips I've done with the black and brown artist pencils I mentioned before it's all so much easier to uh, to can do your chips with those little pencils. You can just put little dots, little line, little line of dots, and uh, you don't have to worry about getting too heavy. You can make your your scratches really, really subtle, and that's what I wanted to go with. That you know, heavy use, but not a lot of really deep, deep uh, scratching, and except along the side here. So, considering how much trouble I had with this kit. I really like the way it turned out. I'm very pleased with the weathering. Like I said, I went heavy on the weathering. I wanted it to look like a well-used heavy-duty veteran. So guys, now thanks for Storm and Facility 1988 for getting this group build going. Um, I think Facility is just about ready to get his in paint. And I know Storm was uh, talking about maybe this week getting that digital cap pattern done on their Bronco, on his Bronco. So I'm really looking forward to see that. I went with this because I think that from what I've seen of the digital stuff it's more of a parade ground look whereas most of the field stuff is in this simpler uh, three color um, traditional more traditional camouflage so anyway there you have it guys I hope you enjoyed this I hope you uh, like the look of the kit you know please comment and if you don't like it tell me why I always like uh, always like the uh, the the um, the knowledge of you other all you guys on youtube of like well maybe you should have tried that lock blockster maybe you should have tried this uh, i appreciate that kind of good 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 constructive uh hey maybe you should have done that so anyway i'm gonna follow this up with a few pictures and uh, i'll talk to you guys later